Hello people, Nico here. I'm making this video because I was linked in a conversation by M.G. How, which I'm presuming stands for a man going his own way, and I think it's also valuable that I make this video before the talk uh, that I will have with Rollo Tomasi. I'm just going to quote what uh, man going his own way wrote in one of the aspects of that conversation that I was linked on Twitter because I can't read the whole conversation as I'm blocked by one of the people or I have blocked him, I have no idea what's happening there. And he says there, overriding a biological directive like sex is incredibly difficult to do, but it is the ideal. Everyone agrees on this. There is no camp in MGTOW saying otherwise. Well, since I'm not in MGTOW, allow me to say otherwise and allow me to disagree with this very point. Even though I think it was Barbarossa that first said this, I do not agree with it in any shape or form and I do not believe that Barbarossa agrees with it either. You see, rejecting your libido or controlling your biological directive as you put it is not simply a brain process that you need to control. Libido is a direct response to the levels of testosterone that you have in your blood. So, in essence, in order to want to remove your libido is to basically wanting to remove your testosterone from your system. And testosterone is what turns a fetus from a direction of becoming female into becoming a male. Furthermore, Libido and anhedonia, which means in essence to not get pleasure out of sex or pleasure out of things that are normally pleasurable, such as engaging with women, for example, is a symptom of a disease, right? In medicine, we consider anhedonia and decreased libido to be a symptom and we treat it or investigate further in order to understand the causes of this symptom. And it should never be the primary objective of any man's movement, let's say. And I will just quote a couple of diseases here that can give you a decrease in libido and anhedonia. And it's mix and match. Sometimes both can occur, but mainly I was going for a decrease in libido here. A pituitary tumor, primary testicular failure, testicular trauma to both the testicles, Antipsychotic prescription that increases the levels of prolactin, depression, severe depression actually, anxiety disorders, chronic fatigue syndromes, liver disease, HIV, and being increasingly obese, as increased fats can turn testosterone into estrogens in your bloodstream. You see, decrease of libido is a symptom, and it should never be a desired effect. And anyone who suggests otherwise does not really accept, I think, his masculinity and does not accept the main thing that makes a man a man, which is testosterone. And it is one of the main, if not the only, hormone which exists in that much of a level that is so different from the feminine that is actually creating this direct change in everything that we are and in the ways that we behave and in the ways that we think and in the structure inside our brains and we need to understand and accept ourselves as being different it's feminists that say that there are no differences between men and women we don't say that if you believe in biology if you understand the things that we discuss then you understand that there is a fundamental difference between men and women both in the way that they think in the way they act in the way that they behave, and in the way that they look. And it's how it needs to be. And we need to accept our differences and not reject those differences. So just thinking about ways in which a person can actually reduce their testosterone levels or to control their libido, this can only happen as a direct response of a fuck-up in your hormone levels, let's say, in your hormone balance. Now, there is a method in which this happens fairly normally, and that's age. As people age, after the age of about 30, 35, their testosterone levels will decrease, and you become calmer in yourself. 
And many people have documented this and many people have said this, that, you know, you wait until you age, until you hit about 40, 50, and you'll see that, you know, you don't even care anymore. And that's because of the decrease in testosterone levels. But that means that you're becoming a bit more feminine in your hormonal profile. And I say a bit here, and I'm not saying that old people are feminine or anything like that. I'm just saying that there is a gradual decrease in the testosterone levels. Therefore, all the things that are telling the brain, go, 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 go and act. And I'm not talking primarily for sex. I'm talking about energy levels, um, you know, dominance uh, displays and all of these things are actually being dialed down. Right, so I'm just going to talk about testosterone, just testosterone for now, and just say things that it does. And I'm just going to start from puberty because you know there's no reason to talk about anything before that. Testosterone levels will increase your libido, they will make pubic, facial, body hair you know, all the androgynous characteristics start to appear. It will lead to increases in muscle mass, it will lead to deepening of your voice. It will create mental effects such as increase in aggression, increase in activity, and increases in dominance displays. You, you mean, I mean actions in which a man might compete with another man in order to display that he's different or a bit more dominant than the other male in the eyes of another woman. And that's naturally what happens. And this happens in nature and in all mammals as well. This is naturally what happens. Now, as you become an adult, testosterone levels within your blood, they lead to normal sperm development and they're a regulator of your physical and cognitive energies. Therefore, if your testosterone levels drop, you will feel less likely to do things and you will feel a lot less motivated to do anything. Therefore, testosterone is very, very important when it comes to the biochemistry of a man. It's also important in the maintenance and growth of muscle mass, and it's important in the maintenance of a healthy libido. And you see the libido changing after you hit the ages of about 30 to 35, when testosterone decreases and the interest of men generally in sex goes down, and all the effects that I described before also decrease. And that's important to keep in mind. I just want to close with saying this final thing. We're sitting in the manosphere and we're sitting within a section of the manosphere and we discuss problems that have to do with men, uh, about masculine identity and about issues, you know, to do with women, you know, getting married with women, divorces and all of these things. But it is a fundamental aspect of the manosphere that we need to accept the man for who he is and how he's built for all his deficiencies, insufficiencies, as it's given to us by nature. If we're sitting in a section of the manosphere which rejects man's libido, if we're sitting in a section of the manosphere which rejects anything that's determined by testosterone, then we're not sitting in a section of the manosphere that accepts and loves men. And we need to start loving men and start accepting men for who they are. And if we're not going to do it, then we certainly shouldn't expect from society to do it. Like I said in the past, my message is and should be to accept yourself as you are, with words and all, and to improve the things that you don't like about yourself. Removing your sex drive and rejecting that sex drive means in essence rejecting something that essentially makes you a man. I'm not saying that men should have sex. I'm not saying anything like that. But what I'm saying is that we can never aim and strive towards a decrease of our libido. It is a fundamental aspect of being a man. I'm not going to tell you what to do with that libido. I don't care what you do with that libido. All I'm going to say is that libido equals testosterone. Whether you agree with it or not, that's reality. And that's all there is to it. And I'm going to start with this point, hopefully, when I have the discussion with Rollo Tomasi in the future. Thank you very much for listening. Take care.